Hey everybody, this is Grace, and in this video I'm going to talk about um, people who believe, and truly do seem to believe, that their lives are much more, much, much, much more interesting and all oh, than, you know, than anybody else. And usually it's just one person they're telling their stories to about their lives, and they can take anything and to them, they're taking that one story and making it so interesting, just so fabulous. <laughs> okay. And I've been around these people my whole life. I'm going to say my whole life this time. And they, they will um, act as though they're on stage and pretty loudly. They cackle a lot. They dress pretty wild and uh, pretty loud and, and wild and... Uh, you know, like a lot, you know, they don't all do the same, like very, like a lot of bling, or uh, they uh, bedazzle, isn't that what it's called? I don't know, I've never done that, <laughs> I've never worn that, I don't think. I think in some of the shirts, I think it was already on it, I don't know, but I, I wasn't a fan too much at all. And, uh, but they're basically, you know, they're basically histrionic. You know, they, they want to uh, be that center of attention. doesn't matter how negative attention, positive attention. I've been making videos about these types since like eight years. Okay. Eight years. So probably most of them are on, all of them, I think, are on private pretty much now. And uh, but I want to talk a little bit about those. So Okay, I always turn it to here so, so I don't have to watch for kids to be... You know, in my video, I don't put other people's kids in my video. And the sun's going to go down, so it's probably going to be very pretty for too long. I don't know who this is walking up behind me. But anyway, be aware of your environment. <laughs> and I am definitely that. But anyway, um, first I want to tell this story about a woman I knew. Um, she was actually a friend of two of my sisters. My youngest and my oldest sisters. I have one other one in the middle and uh huh. okay don't want to get the person in my video i do it like that anyway maybe i'll just adjust it here pardon pardon okay anyway so Lori, um she's a friend to two of my sisters like i said youngest one and oldest one and uh I was in Texas. Adam was in California. I was living in, uh, which city was it? It was in the mid cities, Dallas, uh, Fort Worth, in the middle. And uh, Adam was in San Jose. That's before I went to San Jose. And I was by myself. And um, Lori must, had asked my sisters if they knew. Uh, Anybody who would let her stay while she when she moved back from to Texas from North Carolina. I don't know where she was in North Carolina. So they taught, they asked me. I said, okay, sure, fine. You know, her friend Lori. I, I, I think I had met Lori maybe once before. I don't remember. But anyway, Lori came to stay with me until she got a job, and then she could move. And she moved out on her own. And um, Lori was. Let's say she's different <laughs> for certain, and uh, but she was nice. She was a very nice person, and uh, overall, she wasn't one to do the thing of gossiping and all that. She may have been actually what some would call too nice, and she's rather because um, like she she came back from uh, North Carolina and she didn't have anything. Oh, I see a shadow moving. I guess somebody's over there. But, um, she didn't have anything. She, I think, I think she may have come on a bus or something. And she needed, um, you know, she got a job and she needed a, you know, something to drive. So she went to those, one of those old, you know, the ones that sold Jews. It was like really old. Out of, you know, like, you would think it would be in an old movie or something to buy one. And I went with her. And the guy told her how much he would sell. It was a little pickup truck. Sell it to her for. And I said, uh, 
No, I think that the, it could be a little bit lower than that. And Laurie was like, no, that's okay. I'll take it at that. And the guy looked over at me. He said, you sure, ma'am? I, I can lower the price. <laughs> it was so funny. <laughs> it really was funny, you know. I mean, I'm sure there were a lot of reasons why he could have gotten in trouble for selling at the price he did. And that's why he was looking at me like his eyes were a little big because I was saying, I think the price could be lower. But he could have been intimidated by me. I have no idea. But she took the price as it was. Well, to her, that was being somehow honest. But she didn't quite understand that they were, they were lying. He was lying. You know? And that's, that's unfortunately, to, and to many of them, that's a norm. I never liked that. I always got it down to way far down. <laughs> Adam would tell me to play bad cop. And he'd play good cop, of course. But it's actually usually the other way around. But I play bad cop. You don't, you don't mess with my money, boy. <laughs> I think I mentioned the other day that one of these guys, he, uh, uh, on my, I had a, one time in my life I had a truck. It was a Ford. It wasn't, actually, I think I was saying that it was the 150, but it wasn't. Or was it? I had a king cab. It was a mid-sized truck. And uh, I loved it. it. It got great gas mileage during that time of my life. I was traveling a lot. And uh, it was just great to have it. You know, it had the king cab too, so all that. But I got it down quite a bit. I think it was like a third of the price. Yeah, something like that. And the guy walked off mouthing. Because he was trying to, trying all kinds of ways. And he was trying some logic that made no sense. And, well, I have a genius IQ. So I turned it around on him and he was... I'm serious, he walked past that glass and he mouthed the word bitch. And I said, yep, you're going to pay for that. And he did. <laughs> so, yeah. It was funny to me. It was rude as can be. And he never should have done that. But that's part of what I wanted to talk about, too. And uh, But you don't try to, you know, screw with somebody's money. You know, I don't use that other word. That's, that's a... That's a, that's a no no, you know. It's a, what is the word I'm looking for? Um, oh, well, I cannot remember the word. Nothing unusual. I'm really tired. Past week or so, I haven't slept much. So, anyway, um, so back about Lori. So, you know, she, I, I realized she was just too naive. And, I mean, you know, she, she was and she wasn't. I think Lori had been through a lot and uh in her life so so she got back on her feet and she got a job as a manager even in a, a restaurant fast food but it was it paid her well enough she moved out on her own and really i didn't hear much from her after that which was okay you know i've had known lots of people that were you know moving around and all that so yeah okay now Lori was um I would say that she was closest to my younger sister. And she was close to both of them. But she had a little problem with the younger one. In that she said that... Now, Lori was just a, a, maybe a year or so older than I. And uh, my younger sister... She was... She is six years younger. And uh, Lori had some trouble with her. And she said, she said, whenever I call her, all she ever does is talk about herself. She says she'll go on and on, tell me how, how was her day, how everything went, and all that. She said, then when I want to say something, she'll say, oh, I got to go. Okay, somebody else had walked by. So how many of us have had somebody like that in our lives? Now, she was my sister, the one she was talking about, and I knew. <laughs> I knew that. I already knew that. So, uh. So she, you know, she's telling me all about how she, you know, Lori was telling me all about how she just only wants to talk about herself and only wants, you know, the things her life says, you know, really she didn't say that, but she just said she wants to talk about herself. And then when she finishes, she has to hurry up and go. And I said, yeah, I, I understand that. <laughs> I guess she was wanting some sage advice from me, but yeah, there was none. It wasn't going to change anything. So, anyway, she just kept talking on and on about the troubles, you know, and uh, why can't, 
You know, she listened to her and let her have it, her say. And so when she finished, Lori finished talking. I said, well, let me tell you about what happened to me today. And she said, oh, I have to go. <laughs> Think about that. She's complaining about my younger sister doing just that. Say, oh, I got to go. And these are the people, as I'm, you know, I was young then. And uh, as I learned, these are the people who they do think their lives are so much in, more interesting. And you're just a boring person who does no, nothing, you know, special, no fun. Boy, if they knew the truth. <laughs> At one point, my sister's trying to figure out what is the truth to me. Yeah, they, they never know. Never will. You know, how my life was. Because they were never interested. They were only interested in their own. And most of the people, not all of them, but most of the people that I ran across in my life were like that. I would be sitting at, at university, sitting outside, uh, feeding the squirrels. And total strangers would come up to me, sit down, and tell me their problems. You know, didn't ask me about anything about me. <laughs> I was, I'm so used to it. I real still am. You just tell me about the secrets of so many people. But really, there are peeps, too many people out there who are like this. They just are so focused on themselves. They're so self-centered. Their self, their woes, their... They're good things, they're bad things in their life, what's going on in theirs. And they, they literally, not literally, they really think that, uh, that any, you know, anybody else in, you know, I can say about me, they have no life outside of just, I'm just boring. I go do this, you know, go do that, and that's it. Uh, like that was, back then I was a, uh, Let's see, I was a career student. <laughs> I was a career student. Undergraduate and graduate attending university. And, um, well, I'll just leave it at that. I had a lot of stuff going on in my life. It was it was very, very busy life at that time. Adam, like I said, Adam was in California. I eventually went to California, not too long after that. After Lori moved, I went to California. And, uh... But like I said, you know, this this was the story of my life. I don't remember, I don't, I think it was not long after that when I came back from California. Or maybe before, I don't remember. But anyway, I could go on and on about that. But how many of us know this type of person? And they're so stuck on themselves. And they, they can't see how rude that would be. Or they don't care. And a lot of people are saying, you know, how these... And they throw everything on narcissists. No, the narcissists. Uh, the narcissist, in my view, now I'm going to tell you mine. My degrees are in psychology and sociology. And my view on the narcissist is the narcissist just cares about themselves. They, they're looking, you know, I've, I've read two different ways this story goes. Narcissus looking in the pond or looking in the lake. Two different stories. I, th I thought it was the pond and was just enamored by the reflection, just fell in love with himself, and couldn't even hear, was it echo? Echo, echo. And uh, it's just, it was all about him. Now, that is, I, I don't see that as a person who's truly plotting and planning against other people. I think it just comes with the, the behaviors. It just comes with the person. Not 100%, but that it's just, um, they're in, you know, I don't even think they think that far to say that person is collateral damage. You know, they don't even think about that person. In my, the way I see most of what I've seen in my life, it's just really, truly all about them. And they're not mean and evil. You know, I've, I've called people pure evil. But you know, the mean evil, no, I think those are mainly the histrionics. Those are the people who just want to be on stage, like I've defined it. That they have to be the center of attention and all that. That's the ones I think are the, the true pure evil. Well, the other ones are also the psychopaths, sociopaths. The other ones can be pure evil. 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 Any of cluster B. Anybody can be. Okay, so anyway, my voice is going out, of course. Um, but anybody can be, okay? But like I said, to me, the narcissist is one that's just in love with themselves. And... And some people say, well, the narcissist doesn't love themselves. 
Well, that's the story. <laughs> I, like I said, I think so many people put so much on the narcissist. You know, seriously. Like it, it's was the prettier word or something. Really, why everything on the narcissist? And I do know that the narcissists tend to exploit others. But is that exploitation just simply, like I said, why, do, why does the word bylines keep coming in my head? But just the other person is just collateral damage. It's not even that they're not even, like I said, not even thinking about that other person at all. You know, they might marry somebody and they really don't think about that person. They're too wrapped up in their own world and their own thoughts. And they really, even if they have children, they just don't. The children or whatever. It's if now if they they have a child that they think is their favorite or something like that, but not really. Like I said, the narcissist to me is one that they just thinking about themselves. They're in that la la land of where they are so wonderful and so beautiful and so everything. That no, nothing else matters, you know, dream world. But that histrionic, oh boy. They're making sure everybody pays attention to them, even if it means being mean evil. Mean evil. And to get their way, they're going to do it. And they plot and they plan. And they mean girl, adult mean girl, adult mean boys. You can see them all around, you know. Okay, then we know the psychopaths, sociopaths. And then, then there are people... Now, some people would say, what I've seen is a mixture of these two, but some would say that that falls under borderline personality as sort of borderlines. What do they call people who have borderlines? Do they call them borderline? Borderline personality disorder? I'm not diagnosing anybody. Uh, but I've seen, what I've seen in people that I know who have been diagnosed is basically Tasmanian devil when they get, they don't get their way or just out of the blue. You know, I grew up hearing things about abusive people, like, you know, it was common to hear about abusive people and the cycle of abuse when I was studying to actually see the cycle and how it goes and stuff like that. And these would fall under there. Some of those, not, they all do the same thing. You know, in the way that they uh, throw temper tantrums, adult temper tantrums, when, you know, like a Tasmanian devil, when they... Um, just it can be like I just said you know when they don't get their way but also just out of the blue uh, which might be more like something like if they had the boss got mad at them at work they come home and they take it out on the uh, per their spouse or their, even their kids or their dogs whatever and they throw a major temper tantrum and they find some dumb excuse to do so you know, but when, when I was studying and all, we didn't use those ter that kind of terminology. It's oh, it's borderline or is this or that, and uh, these were just abusive people. That's what they call them, just abusive people. Well, things have changed. People, you know, want to, too many want to categorize. Say, so, well, this one falls under the narcissist. This one falls under the histrionic. This one falls under borderline. This one falls under antisocial, you know, on and on. And then underneath that, there's this and there's that. And they're not truly sociopaths. Well, psycho sociopaths, they don't even hear that anymore. They, it's like sociopath one or two or A and B and all this fall under this one. I don't have the DSM-5. I have the DSM-4 uh, TR, right? But So I don't know what the DSM-5 has in it, but... Um, it's too much of categorizing. I understand that would be more of a tool, of a tool for billing and cat basically categorizing, <laughs> and, you know, diagnosing. And it doesn't go into a lot of detail. How could it? It would be several volumes, many, many volumes. But yeah. Okay, so anyway, I went with flow on that one. But um, this, these people like Lori. I'm, I'm tired of them. I am so tired of it. And let me tell you, I have, like I said, I have, uh, I was born around people like this, okay? And uh, seen it, well, how old would I be, three or four years old before that I remember stuff? 
And I remember as a very young child, I, I had I always questioned. My favorite question was why. <laughs> and I remember you know asking questions like, why do people, you know, when I'm a little kid, okay, why is it that some people are born in a family but they turn out so different? <laughs> you know, some are mean and some are good. Remember the mind of a child, the language of a child. Um, why are they so different? Why? Is this one so sweet and that one's so mean and hateful and you know things like that as a young child still want to know <laughs> but, but no really um i have a <laughs> major clue and uh anyway these uh like i said i've been around these all my life and, and, and to tell you the truth they think that their lives are so wonderful so interesting and they're not they're, i've heard so many stories by so many people People who are like this and they are very boring people and they, they put it out there you know projection it's fine it's fine they put it out there that the other person you know, oh how well, I gotta go but they they also hint at they think that the other person has nothing interesting going or or it's a what is that word I'm looking for <laughs> that they are thinking their lives are so so interesting when their lives are so boring and yeah, they, they know that, but to somehow justify it in their mind that they're like that, they will say, well, you don't do anything anyway. You, you, you know, you're just a homemaker or you just take some classes. You know, you see what I'm saying? They find a way to, well, I just said, justify it in their mind, maybe. Or some of them don't even have that, um, that about them at all to where that they would need to justify they don't they don't really care you see okay pardon me turn the ac on and off you'll be hearing that a lot of that in the next few months <laughs> oh i have a feeling it's going to be really hot summer here in north central texas at least it's like plenty but anyway now these back to these people um i'm sick and tired of them and i had reason today to it I felt exhausted you know I, I say these are you know the people who are all about me people and that doesn't mean me that means them each one of them it's all about them <laughs> well, I called I used to call me all about me that as if they were saying it and uh, soul destroyers I called them uh, because that back in those days you know pure evil um, So many of them. Soul destroyers, yeah. But to think about it, like I said, so many of what some people complain about, these are people who really are not. It's, and it, and I think too many take it too personally, which I'm going to tell you. My age, and I've been through this so long. Yeah, I've been through that. I've been through that big time. I'm still trying to deal with that sometimes. Like what's been going on in my life lately. This is where I was going today. I just felt so exhausted. I, I just really did. I felt so exhausted with what I've put up with lately. I I've, I've actually have another video I made right before this, you know, the another day, a few days ago, actually. And uh, it goes and basically says some of the same thing about, um, well, no, I made a video. I think I've already put it up. It was about my suddenly I uh, suddenly started turning gray hair it, it seemed like start, suddenly started turning gray it seemed like like really overnight I mean I look at myself in the mirror I have to do things like brush my teeth and you know put makeup on and this kind of stuff different times of the day I see myself in the mirrors right there in front of the sink <laughs> or the bathroom and I see myself and I never had noticed it but the past few days was well, past few days before I made that video um, it was like two or three days before then. How many days that would be, I don't know. But at this point. But I just turned gray. And I had been under a lot of stress. And on top of this lot of stress are um, the people who were talking over me. I mean, my new doctor? Now listen, you don't even know me and you're going to cut me off before I say a word or two and tell me to answer open-ended questions with one word? Are you nuts? You don't do that, especially 
especially in the United States, a male doctor telling a female patient who's in there for their health to basically, you know, not to say in the word shut up, but to limit what she says and how she says it. Not a smart move at all. Not a smart move at all. And I am one of those who could say that's sexism. That is big time sexism. But to go through all that, I'm still, I'm still like, and I'm still like this, you know. I've had female doctors that they don't want to hear you. That they really think you could just come in and they say, how are you doing? How are you feeling? What, what are you here for? They've already had somebody else ask you what you're there for, you know, to get some medications. And they come in. This is what I have experienced. I'm not saying all of them. I'm saying what the ones I have experienced. And they just basically want to spend two minutes. And that's Max. Two minutes. And they're doing all the talking. They ask, oh, you're here, here to refill your prescription. Have you had any cold? Have you had any flu lately? Have you had any this? Oh, righty, okay. I'll go see if I have samples. And they go and they never come back. Not that visit. And you just pay... I don't know, upwards to a couple hundred or say a hundred. You know, if you don't have insurance like I do, I live in Texas and I'm a homemaker. Yeah, I don't have insurance. Unless I want to pay crazy amount of price. Wow, you wouldn't believe. Seriously, you wouldn't believe. It does not represent me. But um, anyway, it's just amazing. to do, The stuff that I dealt with, I don't want to get myself all riled up again. And knowing that there's no solution, because also this whole thing of, uh, like, you, you can get a job. I, I shouldn't go into all that. That's just, it's, it's pathetic. Sexism exists. We know it. We know it does. There's no denying it. You know, it's against, quite often, against the, the female. She, do we still earn, you know, um, what is it? I know that if people had started saying 70 since to the male dollar, but no, ever since the 1956 or so, it was the same amount, give or take one here, one there, and it was lower than that. If someone wanting to make it sound like it was much better, but anyway. Okay, somebody beside me looking at me like, why am I talking to myself? Okay, but truthfully, I'm, I'm exhausted. These people, this type is exhausting to be around. And then, when some people get around that type, you know, it could be your, it could even be your stepchild or your own child as an adult, and they get around the type that want to talk over you, and they they start doing that. Yeah, it doesn't make for a nice living at all. And I'm exhausted by this. I, and I knew that it could be that I was so sleepy lately. Because this kind of stuff will bug me, bother me, but I don't know that it, that's what it is. I think it's trying me trying to uh, say, screw you, doctor. I'm going to do the way I want to. <laughs> really. I, all these healthcare professionals that I've had lived the past, I don't know how many years. Uh, I, wait, healthcare providers. I don't call them professionals anymore. Not those. No, they're not professional. And not this one either. You know, maybe as far as the medicine, but the attitude takes totally away from the pew. You know, it takes away for to me. But they, you know, they, they just, like, I actually spoke to the pharmacist one day before, you know, since I've, since the first time I saw this doctor. And uh, he blew, he blew a gasket. You know, when I said I spoke to a pharmacist, boom, blah, 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 blah. Well, I don't care. In this country, uh, pharmacists give consultations to patients and doctors. So don't go give me that crap that, that what the pharmacist what is a consultation where it says right there I'm going you know right there I'm at the pharmacy and it says for a consultation you know ask to have a consultation with them okay little sign and all that every place has it and uh, he's saying well, I said, well I'm like well, what do they do they're not gonna consult me on how they fill the bottle with the medication <laughs> <You know? laughs> oh my god some people they just had such egos such major, major egos, but in this country, yeah, they do. Yeah, no, that whole attitude of women are, you know, definitely. But, but all these that I've seen, and many of them, they even have this attitude that they're patients. They, they have the attitude that it's physician ego centric, you know, centered. 
It's all about the physician. It's no, it's patient-centered care. But to them, not so much. In fact, it's all about them and their ego. Really, the ones I'm talking about. Not all the out there. I don't know all out there. I only know these ones. Those are the ones I'm talking about. So, And, of course, I could be wrong. I just don't think so. I know what I saw and I know how they acted. So what am I going to do? You know, I'm going back and forth on this. I'm going to dread, once again, going to see any healthcare professional. I'm going to go out there and let me try to find a new one. And I've been trying to find a new one how many years? Oh, that's about over 40 years in trying to find a good one that isn't a jerk, isn't doing the medical cherry picking, medical lemon dropping because I have a health condition, health condition that is rare. Uh, when I first heard about it, it was uh, 1 in 33 million, as I say. So they don't know much about it, and they don't want to have to deal with having to learn, apparently. Or whatever is their issue, they want to be mean and rude and hateful to me. So I will move on. Guess what? My feet are going to be firmly set in the ground. <laughs> I am so tired. I'm really so tired. And this one apparently cannot count. Four. I take four of one of these medications a day. So, and he was... Uh, supposed to order for um, 30, 90 days. And he ordered 100 pills. So, hmm. then I try to get the nurse to fix it. Hmm. Apparently she forgot. <laughs> nurse or MA, whatever is his, his main one. Um, I don't know. Some people, you know, if they're in a position and they can't think about that and Anyway, maybe they're all thinking about how interesting their life is and how boring mine is. <laughs> I, did, I did a video just the other day saying the excitement in my life, I'm telling you right now, and I was kind of being funny about, I don't think anybody knew, but I was talking about my toenail that the dogs kept, you know, uh, okay, gross stuff, but my dogs kept, I don't know why, they kept focusing on my left foot that's the one that I hurt that knee in 20, February 2020. And they kept focusing on that left foot and the toe. And they would run out, like run out the back door. And bam, they'd hit that. Both come, going out, coming in. I'd move. I'd try to jump. Mm -mm. They're going to hit it. They're going to then, as soon as I turn around, they're going to come run right there and hit it. It was so freaking weird. Anyway, it's still falling off. The doctor looked at it. Said, yeah, it's going to be replaced by a new one. Oh, hey, but it still looks weird. I think I also mentioned that we were having uh, two, um, how would you put that, uh, hmm, how would I say that, politely, <laughs> but, uh, I don't even know what you call them, really, uh, what do you call like something like, you know, you got a bathtub, and what do you call those, or shower installed? But it's not the bathtub, it's not the shower, it's not the sink. But the other thing, I know what the name of it is. But what do you call those all together? Bathroom? Fix, not fixtures? What do you call them? Wow. I'm getting older, can't you tell? But anyway, we had two of those installed in two of the bathrooms. One, one in each bathroom. And uh, that was so exciting. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to talk about how, I should talk about how chaotic it was, you wouldn't think, just having two of those additional things, you know, and one in each. How, how much drama that caused. And I'm not just talking about the day that was in, in, these were installed just a couple days ago, I think. Um, there were some cute things to it, like one of my dogs, the American Pitbull Terrier. He, he's got such a good... He's a rescue. He was such a good attitude about things. And the guy that was, one of the guys that was installing it was in the, there's a little bitty, it's, it's in its own room. And uh, he was doing that. He turned around and Adam was, I guess, walking toward it and saw that the, <laughs> they had gotten, they broke through a, basically a wall that we had put up. You know, so they couldn't go and mess with the people installing it, the plumbers. And uh, it was a little short bookshelf and a, a little short desk. And they broke through the, the bookshelf to get there. And they, both of the dogs, and they ran there. 
but the American Pit Bull Terrier one with such a great attitude. <laughs> he was just sitting there. <laughs> He'd stretched his body out, and he puts his arms, front arms across one across one another, and just sitting there watching the plumber do it. <laughs> and the plumber turned around and got scared. <laughs> I wasn't there. That's that's not funny. It's not really not. But actually, they were laughing, you know, about it themselves, and. uh because he's just such a friendly dog. But the, but around it all was so much chaos. Adam going, running around saying, how did that happen? And I'm like, I wasn't even there. So don't even, you know. But, uh, I mean, they, they the dogs create so much chaos. These, are, these were both rescued different times, years apart. And uh, not the same place and all that. And uh, they were rescued. One, the first one was a puppy. The other one was still a puppy, but he was so uh, eight months old. The other one was a month and a half. Yeah, wow. But, uh, so my, my life, you know, what I was saying was my life is not interesting, wasn't interesting. That was the most interesting thing at that time. But I was, I was happy with it, with not having too much because I'd already, I had already have too much. I had to have too much going on in my life with all these things that was, that was going on. And I've just, it was, it was exhausting. It had been exhausting. So I was glad that there was, that, we, you know, my own life was, that was it. You know, the toenail and the dogs doing that. And what's being installed and all that. Still chaotic. But it was just so exhausting, all the other stuff, that I don't think I could have handled anything more. Now, all this time, I was thinking, I really, really need a vacation away by myself. Yeah. Yeah. I really do. I need a vacation. Cal, go on and take me away. You know, I want to go on vacation, though. But, I don't know. It's kind of rambling at this point. I'm watching the sun go down. The sunset. The sunset is actually to the other direction. <laughs> the other direction, but it is. I like to see how it looks over here. So. Okay, but, you know, I mean, th that's dull, but the stuff that I didn't, I couldn't talk about, I just couldn't because I, my brain said no. You know, I kind of, it's just so usual, you know, it's my norm is uh, to, to say something bad's going on because it's rather rinse repeat in my life. So many histrionic people and I'm not wanting them in my life as far as being in my life, but uh, hey, I need a doctor, hey, I need a you know, a pharmacist, hey, I need this, you know, some people I need a grocery store, if I can find one I can go to, that uh, stuff didn't, well, anyway, <laughs> go on and on with that, I could talk about the, the being lied to, and on, I mean, these kinds of things, but, I don't know, okay, I'm getting distracted here, sorry, but anyway, I mean, some of these people, they, they could sit there, now, I can't do it. I can't tell, you know, that they fabricate so much. See, I'm not even one that can tell, you know, the, the whole thing of, you know, truth is stranger than fiction that quite a bit. But the first one I knew that I knew was this. She would make, um, you know, when she was young, she'd go to laundromats and do her, her laundry, of course, and could tell... A story, you know, of something that happened while there that took all of probably five minutes to happen, but she would make it a 30 minute story, and there was nothing interesting in that story. Mine is, I mean, she she would make up stuff to be interesting with her stories, you know, just make up crap. I can't even do that. I can't even, I, I'm just too, and some of it's too bizarre. I mean, who would think, I mean, I have said this part about a doctor behaving like that. Who would think, seriously, a lot of people, there's, there's laws against, <laughs> but I mean, how much can a person have, ha keep, continue having these kinds of experiences? Well, with the medical cherry picking and lemon dropping and all that, so they, they look like perfect doctors. It does play a role. And a person with a rare 1 in 33 million people have it condition. Well, 
anyway i'm kind of rambling like i said i'm watching the sunset <laughs> a little piece and i'm gonna go home and my uh my household i won't just say the household there's gonna be so much chaos there's why is this person what is this person driving anyway i gotta see this i have no idea what that was <laughs> It wasn't a bicycle. It was motorized, and it wasn't a motorcycle. It wasn't really a scooter, or I really honestly don't know, but it was a a mom and her baby. Or I guess it was, it was a weird way it looked all around. So, anyway, I'm not going to be able to see more to really understand it. Okay, I guess I'm going to wrap this up. But I'm enjoying, you know, I, it might seem strange that I come down here to do videos, but I've said before that inside my house is just to, all these years, almost nine years on my original channel, uh, it's just too noisy. It just is. So I come down here and have some peace and quiet by myself, and I guess what? I actually get to talk. You got know, somebody trying to tell to. Sometimes it's that of somebody else having something urgent right then, right then. Or the dogs have something urgent right then, right then. As I say, I, I try to go for, um, to do one mission. I'm on a mission to do one thing. Okay, that, I'm exaggerating. I'm sounding histrionic. <laughs> you know, like I'm just going to get myself a soda with some ice, you know. A glass of soda with ice. And... 30 minutes to an hour later, because along the way, I say, I, I cannot just go and do a straight path because somebody's going to stop me. They have something urgent or, you know, all these years, different, different people, I guess, uh, and animals, because something is urgent right then. And of course, you know, yeah, I can stop, but anyway, that's a whole separate in, uh, video and it's getting dark. My alarm's got one minute before it go, goes off. Watch it go off right as I say that. I'm really good at doing that. <laughs> and so I, that's my alarm to go take my diabetes medicine. And so I'm going to wrap it up. Talk to you all in another video. Bye.